this week on One Devotion. A two-time EuroLeague winner credits a special captain from his first pro team. A former Final Four MVP aims for his third championship season in a row. Some EuroLeague stars tip their forks at the culinary talents in their locker rooms. And as the continent's best return to action, the playoffs races get hotter. In more than half a century of European basketball history, no one can match what Tyrese Rice of Himki Moscow region has accomplished over the last two seasons. In the spring of 2014, Rice led Maccabi Tel Aviv to a pair of heart-stopping victories to seize the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague trophy in Milan, where he was named the Final Four MVP. Last season, having taken up a new challenge with Himki, Rice starred again as his new team won the Euro Cup title, and he claimed MVP trophies for both the full season and the Euro Cup finals. Conquering the continent's top two club competitions and also raising the MVP trophy after the last game in each is a feeling that Rice alone can describe. It's been a blessing, actually. I mean, you know, I did a lot of work and you know, been lucky to be on some good teams and, you know, just trying to maximize the opportunities that's in front. And luckily I've been able to, you know, win some championships and then, you know, everything else just falls into place after that. Winning Europe's top two competitions has not made Rice content. In fact, it has only made him want to win more. I look at, you know, the guys before me, you know, Spinulis and all these guys, and they've won you know, multiple Euro Leagues and, you know, multiple Greek League titles and all this stuff. And, you know, you just want to be mentioned as one of the greats. So, I mean, that's enough motivation for me. Though he was a go-to guy on back-to-back -back championship squads, Rice insists his life has not changed much with his great success. More press, <laughs> more interviews, but other than that, you know, everything's pretty much the same. I try to keep things the same and, you know, go about everything the same way. And, you know, just try to live my life as basic as possible. Rice is a single father and has been fortunate to share his experiences playing all over Europe with his son, Ashawn. It's been great. I mean, he's getting to see a lot of things that he's never, you know, that he might not get to see for a while. And, you know, coming to all these countries and meeting all these people and, you know, I know that he never forgets it because he's always asking me about, you know, former teammates or, you know, former friends that he had, you know, when I was, uh, when we were all over Europe. So it's a great experience for him that he'll definitely appreciate as he gets older. It hasn't always been easy spending seven years playing at the highest levels for six teams in five countries often with a Sean at his side, but there isn't much that Rice would change about his ride. I would, you know, keep it the same or, you know, have him here for even more time, you know, so he can see even more things. But, you know, the, time, the space that, he's, that I'm having from him now is helping him grow. You know, it's helping me grow more. It's helping me figure out things for him as he gets older. And, you know, he has to find his way also. So it's good for him to be here for, you know, the good times and the bad times. In winning his titles with two different teams in back-to-back -back years, Rice thinks he may have found a simple secret to group success. I just think it's about guys being together. I mean, there are a lot of teams with a lot of great individual players. There's a lot of teams with, you know, great coaches and, you know, things like this. But if everybody's not together and not on the same page, then you can only be a good team. You can't be great. In his EuroLeague return this season, Rice is the second best scorer and top assist maker and stealer for Himke. But his numbers only hint at how dangerous he is, especially as the season gets longer and the game's more crucial. Midway through the top 16, Rice has helped put Himke on a path to reach the EuroLeague playoffs for the first time.
but he says that his real goal is to bring Hinky even further to the EuroLeague Final Four. It's a long way down the road, but you know that's definitely a goal for us. It's something that we believe that we can achieve, and you know we're not going out, you know, to play any games to think about you know what is. We're just going to try to take it one game at a time. You know, and hopefully put ourselves in a position where we can beat it. Welcome to Scavenger Hunt. Let's meet today's intrepid explorers. It's Adam Hanger and Kim Tilly from Laval Kucha Vittoria Gasteis. Find something round that's not a basketball. Something round. Something round. We can we can go. Can take around. your head. <laughs> But I How is this round? This is round. Where? Here. It's not whole, but it's round. No, I think I win. Yep, Kim, you win. First of all, I got here first. <laughs> yeah, and this is, more, this is more or round than this. That's true. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty round. First yeah, point to Kim Tilly. I, I think it's a tie. I win, I win, though, right? I think it's a tie. Find something the same color as your jersey. <laughs> paper? I found this paper first. <laughs> yeah, got, that's bigger. That's bigger. Sorry, you want. Yeah, Kim, that's <laughs> huge. Two points. Find something made of glass. 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 This is glass? Yeah. I'm not sure that's glass, <laughs> Kim. No, I didn't find any glass. You won. Adam's point. <laughs> find something to eat. Oh, that's oh, far. That's really oh, it's far. We really got some far. apple in the There's bathroom. apples, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to go get an apple? I'll give you that one. All it's right. really far. I go get it. I go get that. I found a piece of. Uh, piece of what? <laughs> I found a piece of. But you see, uh, I'm, a good, I'm, a, I'm a good teammate, so I brought you another apple. Oh, thank you. Find something to drink that's not water. Oh my gosh. How are we? we have to go back all the way down there. Good hustle, Kim. What about you, Adam? I lost. <laughs> Last one. Find a dirty object. Something dirty. Dirty. Yeah, something dirty. Depends. My shoes. The cereal Ely was eating. That's My dirty. My shoes dirty. It fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I think I won, no? You won. <laughs> The top 16 is back with a bang, delivering some thrilling action in round eight. Here are the key moments. Panathinaikos down Fenerbahce, Lokomotiv cruise past Sedevita, Darusha Faka beat Unikaha and Servena Zvezda outgunned Anadolu Efes. In Group E, the game of the week saw a coaching reunion between Shasha Djordjevic and Jelko Obradovic as Panathinaikos hosted Fenerbahce. Epe Udo led the challenge for the visitors, but Miroslav Radulica and debutant Elliot Williams sparked the Greens to a crucial victory, which brings Fenerbahce's unbeaten top 16 record to an end. I mean, we played with a lot of energy, you know, we had the crowd tonight to have our backs and everything, but we've been working for a long time, you know, January we didn't really have a good month, but we wanted to start out the second half of the top 16 really good, and that was big for us tonight. In Russia, Sedevita soon fell behind to Lokomotiv, and a spectacular performance from Anthony Randolph allowed the hosts to surge further clear. Randolph finished with 28 points, 13 rebounds and 5 assists as his team cruised to its third straight victory.
So we made a very serious second half. Uh, everybody was ready to fulfill his role. We play obviously very good defense, and uh, we are very happy about this win. We are looking forward for the second round of top 16. We have a good record right now, 6-2, but we have three very difficult games in a row. Unikaha Malaga competed hard with Darul Shafaka in the opening stages, but the home team soon established an advantage, and 21 points from Luke Harangodi paved the way for Darul Shafaka to comfortably claim its second victory in the top 16, keeping its playoff dreams alive. And a thrilling game in Versace saw Servena Zvezda and Anatolu Efes battle hard, with Dario Saric helping the visiting team to a half-time lead. Zvezda fought back behind the electric Quincy Miller and inside force Mike Zirbes, and after four ties in the final quarter, the home team raced away to a big win. Fenerbahce remains top but now only holds a one-game advantage over surging Lokomotiv with Panathinaikos and Zvezda sitting comfortably with five wins. The other four teams still have playoff hopes but with plenty of work to do. Real Madrid outgunned Bamberg, Seska defeated Himki, Laboral overcame Jalgiris and Barcelona held off the challenge of Olympiakos. Group F tipped off with a local derby as Seska Moscow hosted Himki looking to avenge an opening round defeat. Nikita Kurbanov gave the host a strong start before Tyrese Rice led the visitors back with 12 assists. But Seska's backcourt duo of Milos Teodosic and Nando De Colo had the final say, combining for 33 second half points to secure a high scoring victory. The whole team held towards to the, to the victory from the beginning, from the start until the end. The whole team is important. See all together the players that they compete over here, but they compete also in practice, and this is very important for me. So team is very important. Jalgiris Kaunas battled hard against Laboral Kucha behind Jan Vujukas, but the Spanish team kept pushing and another double-double from Ioannis Borussis, along with a flurry of points from Darius Adams, gave Laboral its fifth straight win. Home team Broza Baskets was inspired by 20 points from Darius Miller in an exciting battle against reigning champions Real Madrid, who received 21 points from Sergio Yui, including six three-pointers, and pulled out the big plays when it mattered the most to secure an important road victory. Olympiacos travelled to Barcelona for a big showdown and two former Reds players were instrumental in giving the home team a key victory. Stratos Perperoglu and making his second Barcelona debut, Joey Dulce, led the charge for the Spanish side as they secured a second straight win. Difficult winner against a difficult opponent, but we played good and we deserved the win. We started from defense, we played good defense and then we were able to score some uh, easier shots on offense. We hope that this is the beginning for our comeback, for it's a tough group and we need to win uh, a lot of games from now on. Sesca and Laboral remain tied at the top with Real Madrid in hot pursuit and Barcelona level on four wins with Himki for the final playoff position. But Olympiacos and Bamberg are just one game back. Best cook. Nobody can cook on this team. <laughs> I can say who's not the best cook, and that's me. For sure it's not me, <laughs> because I'm terrible at it. The teammate that is the best cook is probably Petteri Kaponen, because he likes to make Italian dishes and he thinks he can cook Italian dishes. Uh, he probably cooks spaghetti and uh, he makes something with shrimp, I think, all the time he always talks about it. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for uh, my teammates to cook for me. Um, in the meantime, uh, my wife does a big Thanksgiving dinner for, for the team always. Uh, that's, you know, Thanksgiving's for friends and family, and uh, my team's my friends and family over here. So uh, 
You know, my wife is the best cook on the team so far. I hear JR is cooking a lot. Uh, he's always talking about cooking, but I haven't tried his meal yet, and I'm wondering if he's just talking on, or he's really cooking. It's, uh, I think it's uh, Jerry Milulu. He do very fun some cakes, and uh, it's very nice. I don't think any of my teammates are good cooks because most of them they don't know how to cook. Uh, so I cannot choose somebody. <laughs> That's good. Uh, nobody cooks, I think. I didn't have a chance to, to, to try the food of my teammates, but I think Edwin Jackson, because he's French, so he can make some frogs for us. <laughs> teammate that throws the best parties is probably nobody. <laughs> We're professionals who don't have parties. <laughs>
I'm more anxious than you. <laughs> that you are on the court, you know. In the beginning, you know, I was uh, getting from Peristeri to Olympiacos to Euroleague team, and I was the starting point guard. He, you know, he say, whenever you go inside, I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous. You know, when you're shooting free throws, I say, come again, let's go, let's go. I'm more nervous than you that you are in the court, you know, you're playing, you know. That's what he was telling me. It was only a matter of time that the Mansaris brothers would square off in a Greek league game. And sure enough, it was a strange feeling for Vangelis. I couldn't guard him, you know, I tell you the truth, I couldn't guard him. It was very hard for me to, to guard him, uh, to guard my brother. You know, in the game we would find each other, you know, one on one. But it was difficult for me, you know. I think I let him score. Adonis is still playing professionally in Greece with Ethnikos Pireos and still living their basketball dream side by side with his younger brother. He would like to be a coach. And he's trying you know, to go to very minor leagues, you know. And when I have time, I could go over there with him and we coach in a minor league team. So I help him, you know, sometimes. We help each other very much because I see him when I can in the most of his games. He see me all my games, so you know, we're very much you know, to help each other because we know how to play. Uh, I gave him some instruction, what I saw on him, uh, good and bad. He tell me all the time what I need to improve or how she, she, he see me in the games. You know, he's my best uh, and worst uh, guy that uh, criticizes me. After every game, he's the first man that I will talk. Uh, how you watch me today, I, don't, I didn't do that, I should do that. And you know, he sent me the, and the bad and the good things, you know. He helped me very much in my life uh, to help me come here. Uh, that I will never forget. Locomotive Kuban Krasnodar center Anthony Randolph missed the start of the season due to injury, but the Russian club waited patiently for his return. And now that he's back to fitness and in top form, it's clear to all why. Randolph earned the MVP honor for top 16 round eight after dominating the floor with an historic outing on Thursday night as Lokomotiv routed Sedevita Zagreb 87-63. Randolph produced 28 points in 28 minutes, as well as grabbing 13 rebounds and dishing five assists to produce a performance index rating of 43, which was not only the highest of any player during the week, but also established a new club record, was the second highest index rating all season and tied for the fifth best index in top 16 history. Number five, Athens, Greece. Miroslav Radulica for Panathinaikos. Nice move. Oh, and what about the finish as well? Spectacular reverse slam after great footwork from Miroslav Radulica. Number four, Nuremberg, Germany. Last few seconds of the second quarter. Sergio Rodriguez floats up a beautiful pass and Jeffrey Taylor throws it down. Wonderful touch from Sergio Rodriguez. Number three, Moscow, Russia. Another buzzer beater. Again, it's the end of the first half. Nondo de Colo sinks the shot. But Jessica Moscow, feel good factor at half time for the home team as de Colo with 0.2 seconds on the clock lets it go. And the buzzer beating specialist has another one. Number two, Athens, Greece. Panathinaikos on the fast break. Nick Kalapis with the pass. And Elliot Williams on his debut. That's a way to get the fans on your side early in your career with a new team. Elliot Williams with a fantastic alley-oop. Number one, Visac, Serbia. FS with the ball, Thomas Ertel to Alex Tyus. But what about that from Quincy Miller? Appears like a lightning bolt to swipe the ball away. The race for the playoffs continues strong in top 16 round nine, which features one of the Euroleague's rising powers seeking a vital road victory in the game of the week and two powerhouse contenders going head to head in Group E. The Game of the Week showcases the versatile talents of Victor Claver as Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar travels to take on Anadolu FS Istanbul and the electric Jedi Osman, with the Russian team having won their only previous meeting by a single point earlier in the top 16. 
also in Group E after having won all three of their previous matchups this season. Fenerbahce and Do It All Luigi Datome will be seeking to do so again and maintain their 100% home record as they welcome playoff chasing Cervena Zvezda and the always exciting Terence Kinsey. Elsewhere in Group E, Serevita hosts Darul Shafaka in Zagreb, while Panathinaikos travels to meet Unicaja in Malaga. A titanic battle awaits in Group F, where reigning champions Real Madrid and inspirational team leader Sergio Yui will be gunning to strengthen their playoff push at home against the equally determined Seska Moscow and another hugely entertaining point guard, Milos Tildozic. Playoff repercussions are assured too when Olympiakos Pireos host Laboral Kucha in their fourth time confrontation of the season. Olympiakos won twice so far, but Vasilis Panoulis and company enter this rematch behind in the standings to a Laboral team led by one of their former teammates, Ioannis Borussis. And Group F is complete with Jalgiris hosting Bamberg in Kaunas, while Barcelona hits the road to take on Himki in Moscow. We'll see you next week with more EuroLeague action.